they used to, uh, the grandma would uh, sing to the, uh, the the baby or something. She would she she always had a hand drum, you know. She had a little hand drum, and when she was putting the uh, baby to sleep, you know, he'd be in a swing, way way bison. That's what they call a swing, way way bison. And she'd be pumping the drum, you know. Baby would be looking around and trying to find out where the sound is coming from. Pretty soon he had his little eyes closed and he would see some studio different, different noises with the drum. They're not loud either, they just kind of make it, it's a pounding in the background. Thank you for your, uh, your patience on all this equipment stuff. We are, uh, had uh, two, two uh, audio lines that were colored black, and then one of them I thought was the same one, so. <laughs> There's a triumph in the studio. Today. Oh yeah, yay. <laughs> but Karen, that was really interesting what you are talking about, the, the drum and the soothing. And, um, I know like these people who study language and soothing sounds, they call it, it mother ease. They call the sound of a, the mother makes to a baby that a baby can understand, you know, like maybe we talk at baby talking like, oh, hey baby, or we change our pitch, mm -hmm. we change our tone, and it, it makes us relax and soothes us. And that's what we need today every day for our children in this life just to be soothed and so we appreciate that relationship between sound and making people medicine and feeling good another thing they used to do is hum just hum you know or they would kind of just sing a little uh, indian song you know i used to hear my aunt my aunt uh, ruby she used to say she used to say like uh, me me me, you know. Just she had a voice. She had a good voice, so not me sounding like a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think everybody, nobody gives himself credit. I mean, it's you know that's one of the things about uh, I don't know what it is. I mean, some people, yeah, they like the, their voice being heard. But I know tons of people, especially Native people, they yeah. they don't want to be, you know. I mean, I remember how hard it was to get used to it. But once you start doing it and doing it more often, you know, it, it mm -hmm. you get kind of accustomed to it. And I don't know what that is. Is there something that you've run across, Keith, as far well, as I your, know, like your own you, voice? When you sing, a lot of times, like even like singers like John Lennon would always want to double his voice and the singers from the doors. So like, I would like, I like to like record and Didn't bite those dogs And then I like to sing along, sing it, didn't bite those dogs. So when you blend them together, they sound really good. So maybe we're going to have to try a blending, Karen, like You'll yeah. sing it on the top, and then you'll, mm -hmm. you'll say it really low. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a high voice, and, and you know, if you spin the gill square beyond, I will. <laughs> Does you give her a little... <laughs> but, uh, I said, if I get drunk, I will sing. <laughs> but I think that's what we're doing here, just letting down our, our uh, fences, and so um, we can have, have a little bit of fun. But... All kinds of people don't like the sound of their voice, you know, like how you sound recorded, or, and and there's there's ways that you can um, get used to it, and you, there's different microphones you can use that maybe pick up lower ends and things, and um, there's 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 ways that, but just to have the courage to do it and uh, bring it forward is is really good. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, I, you know, I, I only say that just because I know there's a, there's a kind of a, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or not. I mean, a lot of people think, uh, you know, you don't want to be uh, loud, gawin, on big z, you know, or mm -hmm. don't be too loud or whatever. Yeah, I used to hear a lot of all the more men sing, but they would be singing Indian, and when the ladies would sing, they'd be using Indian words when they. Mm -hmm. When they were, when they were singing, you know, yeah. and, the, and then they would have the beat of the song. The ladies, yeah, they were over in the sixties, you know, mm -hmm. maybe even seventies. Oh yeah, I don't know why they. We never sat down with them to learn how they they got the beat of the song. Mm -hmm. But you know, they but they made it up somehow, you know. Like children, uh, they must say, uh, I don't know how they slow, then they go high, you know. And yep. walking downtown, that's what they were singing, you know. Mm -hmm. Children, uh, they must say, uh, and maybe that's what, like, I have to learn, like, how to make my voice go up, and then mm -hmm. it's used, I have a low voice. No, you sounded really good, you know, with those uh, verses there. I was just like, oh, man, I can't wait to get you guys in the, uh, in the studio. The process that you, you have, it's like um, learning to write your name with the opposite hand. If you put a pencil or a pen in your, yeah. your hand and try to write the, your name, it wouldn't come out too good if you used your opposite hand. Yep. But you start doing it a few times, Oh yeah. at least you can start sketching it, you know. Yep. And, and singing is similar, and, and talking is, is a very similar thing. I, I spend almost every day recording, and, and even just on my iPhone. And, and uh, I was at Karen's house the other day um, doing some field recording. I set up a, a, a digital microphone that's as good as any portable studio and recorded her voice in, in her own atmosphere. And, she told me stories, which we're sharing some today, but it's a whole process, you know, like, mm -hmm. in, and like George was saying, it, it would be nice to um, maybe um, process it a little bit more. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we have the tools to do that, you know what I mean, especially in, in post, as they say, you know. <laughs> we always joke about that, you know, when we're... Uh, doing a, a video or we're doing recording some audio it's like oh don't worry about that we'll clean it up and we'll post, fix or, it in the post yeah either that will add some effects or whatever it need, needs to be done but yeah um definitely hey we're uh we're we got keith uh Sicola here in the studio and uh um karen here we're auntie karen with uh, the anishinaabe moen um show here so it's kind of a little special event um, something that uh, came up last week we had the opportunity to get Keith up here and so we went ahead and uh, took that uh, took that opportunity and so what we're gonna be doing is uh, I was telling Keith about some of the songs that that Karen had heard uh, or she wanted to um, uh, I guess in the the industry what would that be called lay down <laughs> lay down on some yeah, tracks yeah she wants to lay down some tracks yeah exactly yeah so we invited Keith up here because he's uh, we're trying to utilize him as much as we can as, as a producer and we want to invite uh, other uh, you know musicians that are out there that are within earshot if uh, you got a project that uh, what is this? This will almost be your third, right? That because uh, you helped Mo, yeah, uh, you know, piece together right. uh, part of his project, yeah, right. And uh, then we got uh, December Wind, so we're gonna be launching that here very yeah, we'll, shortly. We'll have some giveaways and a oh, CD sure. launch, you yes, know, like, yep, and uh, some really uh, Native Americana. We call it the Crossroads of Minnehaha and Hiawatha. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, I guess we can go, uh, we got Perry here in, uh, you want to go over your word, your word list again? And oh, then yeah. uh, just kind of um, update that so we don't lose the focus here as far as uh, Anishinaabe Moen goes. I, I know you guys went through some of the uh, examples, like, uh, what is this now? Let's play? Yep. Shall, shall we play? 
Um, the first format is just a question. Wait, Graham, you want to say it again? Okay. That's a bone game. A toddy way, a toddy win. Card game. Moccasin, uh, moccasin. Todd week. Moccasin, Todd See that you could see uh, a moccasin, moccasin. That's a moccasin game, moccasin. And uh, like uh, lacrosse. Bagar or way win. Yeah, maybe these are uh, these are all Indian games that uh, that we play at. Uh, they used to play that uh, nabo the bone game at funerals, and they they play dish game, the dish game bagese. Mostly them, and like what I said, the uh, the casino they call the casino a tardy week or make. You know, that's what should be on the, on the casino, a tardy week or make. That's, um, but there's, about the nana with the ma, how did she came in, oh ma? Did I be send her away? Did I get her she came away? You should play them, I said. But mostly they're all, like Myra had a lot of them games. She passed away, Guinebo. Now, I don't know what, Than used to have her games too after she left now. Now Than is gone, so I don't know who has their games. So they had all, almost all of these games. I don't know who they're gonna pass them on to next. I suppose they'll have to ask Ray Thompson because he's, that's uh, his grandma, his mother that passed away. So he must have them and he's gonna have to try to spread them around, bring them or ask an elder to to bring them out and did she get play Neil. That's the title of your children's game board too, right? Benucci did she get? Yeah. Child play, playing mm -hmm. and child. Benucci, the she came in, that's playing. Is there a way that we could play those games on this program? Yeah. Or do you have to have the board and all that? Uh, it, this there's got to be. Or maybe we could play and we could, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we we could. Go through, the, go through the go through the words that are on the board. Oh yeah. Yeah. That big board, I, that big thing I brought up here. Yeah, you know, this one here. This is, these are all the words on the game that, that we made. These are all the words on there. Uh -huh. So, we, Carrie could probably go through all of them, all the words. I don't know if that's why I'm holding it upside down. Right, right it's good. Okay. That's a good way of learning, just to hear the words played on the, played on the radio, like wake up, you know, shkuzin, someone waking you up, you know, shkuzin. Shkuzin. Yeah, shkuzin. Shkuzin. And I'm hungry, nebakade. Nebakade. Yeah, see then. You could growl like a bear yeah. too, like, nebakade, nebakade. <laughs> <laughs> like, come here, Ambe Oma. Ambe Oma. Way weeb, way weeb. Yeah, that's another one. Hurry up, way weeb, way weeb. Way weeb. Underlay. Yeah. Nee ill, nee ill, yeah, down. Pow wow. A pow wow. 
Or maybe what we do too is we do like a uh, a call-in thing or a Facebook thing or a um, text thing where they, I don't know, we could develop some or get some prizes going, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, the game boards themselves. I know we've got a few here that we intend to uh, to give away, so maybe that's what we'll do uh, upcoming. We'll kind of structure it a little bit and we'll put the rules out there. And uh, I know Darren is working on, uh, I think, making a page for you guys. Mm -hmm. And we have to go out there and do a photo shoot, you know, so we got to get you all uh, ready for, like, you're going to town and go down and take some pictures and... You know? Me and Lester used to play cribbage in the Nishinaabe, mm -hmm. like 15, 15, two. I haven't mm -hmm. played since he, he marked up. Mm. But 15 would be Midaswe Ashinahanan, 15. Anish, 15, two. You know, just do the cribbage numbers. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember what the how they count in cribbage anymore. Wasn't it by twos? No. Well, whatever the point is, or whatever well, points you made. Move, yeah. yeah. And we, we, use, uh, we did the Indian numbers, like, like I, oh, I, I wouldn't even know how to play cribbage anymore. Yeah. I, would, I know you say uh, gog for a skunk. So if yeah. you got skunked, chagog. So if you got skunked in cribbage, how would you say that? Oh, a Chicago. A Chicago? Yeah, you got skunked. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. In Chicago, we call them a skunk. <laughs> and then there's even uh, bingo, like beige, uh, B, Bejik. Oh, yeah. I, niche enough. I-20. And the Nisiridana Niwin, 34. G, Nanamidana, G-50. O, 62. Nimbadaswe, Ashinish. You know, yep. you could do bingo in Indian and just by calling them. We could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then... Uh, we need some prizes, so if there's any programs out there that want to sponsor something like that, get a hold of us, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll we'll get your prizes out there and let people know that you're the the uh, sponsor or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of a good partnership. If there's any any programs out there, we can develop a uh, a bingo game based Indian on uh, Anishinaabe Mowin. So. Think about it. If you got, uh, it's only one two seventy five. Mm hmm. Each one three. She no, I'm not at seventy five. That would be the last number. Mm hmm. I know, like in uh, out in the east coast in uh, the Akwesasne territory in Ontario, that they've had success, real success in community bingo in in their languages, and and it really caught on good for them. Mm hmm. Nice, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we'll have to... Uh, Gary Farmer's um, where he's from in, in Ontario. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to uh, dig into that and look at maybe doing some of the board games. I, I don't know if you guys, Perry, you want to talk a little bit about your, uh, you and Grandma's uh, or uh, Auntie Karen's uh, board game? Yeah. So I think each, war each <clears throat> children's game has like 32 moving spaces. Uh, split between English and Anishinaabe mode, 16 of each, and uh, they, they're taught through repetition. Mm -hmm. So you could land on a Anishinaabe phrase, you'd have to translate it to English. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, land on an English phrase, you translate it to Anishinaabe. 
<clears throat> I had a teacher in, no, education director in White Earth, Minnesota, say that she really liked that repetition element in that uh, on our game boards. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything, Tina Tum? No, just, just uh, that's the only way you're gonna learn if you play that game every day. And like I said, to learn your language, you gotta hear hear somebody talking every day or or read it or whatever but you know you're not going to learn if you just try once you, you know you're never but every day you're going to learn within maybe three to six months maybe and then a year and then pretty soon you'll be like Perry Baldean learns it because he was a little three-year-old when he started learning and up to eight years old, you're, you're going to have a hard time learning kids that are eight years old. Right now, it, it's, you know, good for them to learn when they're young. Mm -hmm. But uh, just keep using the language. That's all you're going to learn, you know. Even, to, even talk to yourself. That's what I did after my husband died. I talked to myself in Indian. And... Uh, and it, 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 like I said, you hear me talking to myself in the bedroom or somewhere, don't send me to Moose Lake. <laughs> <laughs> but they knew then, then I start just talking right out to them and you know. Mm -hmm. Now Anthony is, knows a whole lot, but he's ashamed of his language. Mm -hmm. you know? But uh, that's the only way you're gonna learn. Yeah. And you know what, you bring out a good point about, um, you know what I mean, having somebody that you can dialogue with. And I think that's a, a big component of this too, is making sure that we we get enough people, you know, that that can uh, speak and uh, share it between each other. Because I, I would probably say that would, you would learn that way too, you know, a big part of your uh, putting your uh, tenses and your persons and all of that together, you know? Because it seems like here we, we talk a lot about, you know, what's going on between each other and uh, some of our extended uh, friends and relatives. So I know everybody likes to keep abreast of uh, what's happening, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, Akazi. Uh, you know what, I, I suggested that years and years ago, like, and we worked right over there in Head Start. That's where we had our first Head Start where it is now. And then we had it up here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there was a loudspeaker up here. And I told them, I said, we should have a, a Indian cassette playing, you know, at least three times a day, even 10 minutes mm -hmm. while the kids are playing. Yeah. Just have it playing with saying the words, you know, and using. Mm -hmm. Mais, mais, euh, mais je vois, 
Is it, did I say that right? Me we sha. Me we I'm yeah, sorry. That means long time ago. Me <laughs> Yeah, a lot of those things is just using it like that. You know, I mean, it was there right on, right on my tongue, but I, I, mm-hmm. I messed it up. <laughs> That's what I said. A lot of people mess up saying horse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you say horse, please? Bebe shashi. No. Bebe shi gugashi. Oh, bebe gugashi. Yeah. Bebe shi gugashi. Yep. It, it, that was hard for the kids to learn horse, so I started doing that. I'd write be be shi gugashi. I put them in the order. Bebe Yeah, Bebe Shigugashi. Then pretty soon they were, they were all saying it right, you know. Karen, you were telling me how to say buffalo. Mushko de Bishiki. Mushko de Bishiki. Mushko de Bishiki. 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 Bishiki is on the end, it's a cow. Mushko de is like. How the big, the, how the buffaloes are, like the big, I don't know, how they look. So that's Mashko De Bishiki. A lot of um, language recovery movement is songs, you know, and so like Karen and I, I ask her, like, my relationship for a long time with the Anishinaabe speakers have been just like ours, um, with Angie Northberg from Ponima. Maybe 50 years ago when I started writing songs in Ojibwe Moan, I would do the same thing, just ask her. And she was kind enough, and, and Collins Oak Grove, both who taught at the university, but we were writing a song at her house, and it's for a song called Grandpa's Lullabies. It's got a nice Spanish melody, but then the, the uh, part we're working on is like, um, you want your baby to go to sleep, so it goes, Please go to sleep. Daga. Nibon, Benucci, yes. Okay, so it goes. And so Carol would feed me the lines. And then so I said, please go to sleep, little baby. Close your eyes. And the next line I would ask her is uh, close your eyes and no and dream of love for the children of the world, for all the children of the world. Yeah, that's that. Those are kind of the the lyrics that I would like to, uh, you know what I mean? Put it all into uh, Anishinaabe Moan yeah. and close your eyes and dream of love for all the children of the world. Anujiagaki, all the children of the world. Love and, each other. And uh, you love each other. The, and, uh, sagi ig, sagi ig. This is the process of creativity, I think, in writing songs, is, is that you throw ideas out to people and um, they come back at you with um, suggestions and a, syn- a synchronicity, synchron- you know, you improve your synergism you improve your the idea like like when you said daga neban daga means sleep daga neban please sleep binu gs please sleep little baby or little kid you know yeah binu I have it written out more in our first.
was yeah, field recording. But that's the idea, and then, then the first part of that song has like a Spanish melody. <laughs> a big uh, uh, dry erase board and just write them down that then I could just do it mm -hmm. I could write the English down and I could I could just do it in the Indian that's a, that's good for the listeners too because they're telling us what we can do to make it better for you Karen one of our elders and our, our, our leaders of our community so like, we, we got to come to you a little bit like that song it would be Daga, D-A-G-A, Daga, Niban, N-I-B-A-A-N, Dinojians. So you would have to be right up there where I could see. Perry, yeah. we got to write this down for your uh, oh, auntie, yeah. okay? Yeah. Maybe like big, like she's talking, do you have a big writing board? Yeah, I think we At some, let's do this. Um, Actually, I got one, I got one right in our, my office there, so when you guys are working, I can yeah. bring it in there. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. But this is the creative process of, of language recovery. It has many, many spokes of our wheel. And we're just one of the spokes I am and what I'm trying to do and, and Auntie Karen and Sister Karen and, and Grandmother Karen and Uncle George, they're all part of the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Uncle Perry. Uncle Perry, <laughs> Grandpa uh, Keith. yeah, Grandpa Keith, Uncle <laughs> Perry, <laughs> Farmer John. <laughs> how do you say that anyway? How, how would you say farmer, like a farmer? It's um like uh, get 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 the gun, get the gun, get the gun, Nini. No. Yeah, wow, like a farmer man. Oh, okay. Remember, I gave you all the words, so all the men. I gave him a bunch of words for like uh, electrician and former uh, a, a guy that uh, has a farm with animals and you know and oh that's when I wrote down about that farmer you know get down now cause you gas you have a cat oh old farmer John has a cat you know cause you gas I got one I got one listen to listen here. Get together with Que. That's a farmer lady. A farmer lady. Get together and Nini is a man. Farmer man. Get together and Nini. Get together and Nini. There you go, yeah. Get together and Nini. Oh, my. What am I saying? It's a start. Get down and get together. Get down and get together. Yeah. Get the game in the get the game. Get the game in the He had a pig with <laughs> Come on, Perry, what's your pig noise? Yeah, he's done, do The goosh goosh. Goosh goosh. Goosh goosh. Goosh goosh. That's even hard to say. I know. You say goo. Owl is hard. Goo, coo, ka, oo. Coo, coo, goo, goo, ka, oo. No, 
Kuku. Kuku. Kau. 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 Kuku. 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 There you go. It's like that. <laughs> what is that? The Beatles? <laughs> or who is that? That's the new, the new form, the new, the new order. Now you could do that song. Yeah. Yeah. Cuckoo, cuckoo, you could do it. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> cuckoo, cuckoo. 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 Cuckoo, cuckoo.
in learning the word small, agashi, agashi. in learning the word Indian, in you know, Anishinaabe. Anishinaabe. So if you were going to say, like, itsy bitsy, could you say something like, uh, chi agashi, no? Or is that kind of no, like nonsense? Big. That's big. That's big, okay. I just thought maybe it was like great, greatly small or something like that, but that's not it. Huh? Sound or something like that, like the sound of. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, i kind of, uh, what do you call it, um, inspired here. You know, I'm glad we we took the time to do this, and uh, I, I think a lot of the stuff, you know, it doesn't really have to uh, stick to, you know, the melody of, of, uh, I don't know, already, right, you know, already. Uh, uh, melodies that have already been used. Use the Kalaija melody. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, but whatever, whatever the 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 rhythm fits. You know what I mean? The uh, the, the Anishinaabe moen. Is there? I mean, obviously the sometimes the words don't uh, rhyme. You know, but how does that work, Keith? In songwriting, like if you. You got it. Is I, there I, I a think certain... you just can't get away from it, you know, like sometimes it doesn't have to rhyme. You right, know, like yeah, that's what I'm... Sometimes rhyming kind of takes away from yeah. everything. But you can, there's ways to get around it, right? Like yeah. either pitch or... Yeah, I think so, or phrases, you know, like you can hang phrases like Karen was doing a lot in the Anishinaabe, mm -hmm. like, Daganaban, mm -hmm. you know, like just taking them slower, phrase it slower. Mm -hmm. And then with our language, it's great for that, all the, the vowels yeah. and consonant sounds, of, but the vowels, we can really make it, um, it's more singable. It's more singable. Oh, okay. I think, you know, like, yeah. it's, it's more, because it's based on rhythm, Yeah. drum. Well, what I'd like to do is have you guys work with the kids here. I know we could probably go after some funding to, you know, bring you up here for an extended period right, and then, yeah. That's what you need, like when she was talking, you have to hear it a lot. Even in a few days where hearing you guys speak a lot, you can, it, it really yeah. opens up a Because lot. It, I think those would be unique to our community when we develop that, especially with the dialect and getting uh, Karen involved. In. Like we kid, like there's one like a song like, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, Could adjust that, you know, like well, however we need. Yeah, 
do the G duck on my what? Bring me something they can bite. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the uh, the tune you guys are going to be working on, right? Well, we talked about it too, like Karen. The need to write another verse too, like after maybe when the fish is in the frying pan. Oh yeah. You know, or like mm -hmm. I bring me some Chautauqua, sh what salt? She, Chautauqua. Yeah, so you know, like something like that, and well, we can go home and eat the fish. Chautauqua win and they give we see they win go. You know. There you go, the second verse. That's mm -hmm. it. And that's all that it takes is just the ideas to put them out there. And somebody else says, yeah, that's a good idea. That's how creativity starts and keeps going on. Positivity, like, no idea is stupid, you know. Like, and, and just throw it out there and it might sound stupid. But and, it, and a lot of times when you create songs and that, you end up with a lot of ideas that don't stick on the wall. Well, I was just thinking of bring me the... Bring me the frying oil, or yeah, another verse. That's yeah. what we need. Each of us could write our own verse, mm -hmm. and I think that's what um, teachers of the language encourage. I know Karen would would love it. I know. Well, I just saw a story. Uh, I think it was on fate. Yeah, it was on. Um, hmm, what's that one about business? Uh, uh, LinkedIn. They had a, a story there about music and uh, incorporating the, the uh, I think it was either Lakota or, no, it wasn't Lakota, it was, uh, maybe it was a Cheyenne. They, had, they, they were putting their writing songs with, with their language in the, the music, and it, was, it wasn't like traditional, it was like, you know, guitar, guitar. yeah, type stuff, and it, it, it's kind of an example they're talking about of how, you know, they're saying, well, languages aren't dying, they're thriving, you know what I mean? So, right. and I think if we start putting some of this music uh, together with the language in a contemporary fashion, I think that'll inspire, you know, other uh, younger people to utilizing it, you know, if they see how, how uh, widespread it can go, you know? Oh yeah, you can use all kinds of music genres too, like the hip hop and the, the beats, the electronics, yeah. folk and blues and and uh, it, you know some of the stuff that, that I learned years ago from our language teachers at the U um, I still know, you know, like this song is one of those <laughs> So, like, so, even though it's sung to this land, and a lot of times we would joke, let's say, like, here's how that translates. <laughs> this land is my land. This land ain't your land. Right, yep. <laughs> and have fun, but what my point is about language and music and, 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 and the, how much it sticks with you. Like, I, in other verses of that song, what is the portal to learning? It's not the learning, but it's the process of learning. Mm -hmm. Well, Karen, uh, her, her background is in uh, early childhood edu education, you know, so she knows a lot about this uh, developing um, learning, you know, as far as uh, young ones go. So I know these songs are probably pretty powerful, mm -hmm. you know, in... Uh, in young ones picking up just the uh, words and you know teaching them how to use the words all that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. and that's the way to teach them when they're little gagashi little you can know magi pinuchi okay mm -hmm. teach them when they're little pretty soon they'll start no, teach themselves. 
Yeah, I noticed uh, my little my little uh, great nephew. He's uh, <laughs> he he surprised me the other day. You know, I came back and he was uh, going over his uh, homework, going through his colors and well, let me see. No, he was going over his numbers, right? And he's uh, so I kind of heard him going over. Uh, I think it was like one through twenty or something like that. And so I was kind of coming up behind him, and I said. Uh, basic needs you know and so he was going on and then he kept on going from there and then he kept going and kept going and kept going oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like well they, you know if they taught him like that more often or continued you know on further I know they would they would maintain and hold on to it you know as long as they knew that people yeah. were were using it you know Mm -hmm. come back to them because some there's always going to be one word that's going to stick in their little mind and, mm -hmm. and, and that's why i said it's it's good to know uh numbers you know like the time basic divide the neck one o'clock you know basic wall big one dollar you know and just uh, uh the numbers you know mm -hmm. basic What is the importance of learning a language? Like I know a lot of people say there's I've heard some people say, Oh, the language kind of faded away in our family because it was the industrial period back in the seventies, uh, late sixties when, you know, the economy where they were trying to fix everything around here and everybody was getting jobs. Um, they said that they're well they stopped learning the language because there was no money in it is that true or is that well my my uh, cousin clara she said she uh, she told her ma she said don't talk to me that way in indian language because it's going to be it's going to be quitting it's going to be done for you soon nobody's going to talk it sure enough you know that's the way it is and, but a long time ago, you know, that's all the people talk. That's how they could get along, you know. Everybody talked the same language, you know, until we started, you know, getting people here that, you know. And I can remember a first grade, this uh, teacher, I can still remember that, that, that verse she was trying to teach all of us little first graders. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my, I pray my, I forget what she said. I pray to the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray. She's trying, she t taught us in that stuck in my mind. I go home and I, she'd say, say, learn it at home and uh well my par my parents were all all uh, traditional you know and i went there and i was laying in bed and i was my mom i was sleep with my mom because we hardly had any beds and i was saying that and my mom said shan where did you she said in indian where did you hear that i said my teacher is teaching us how to say that, you know, in school. And uh, so she said, Gego, Gego Gien, Gego Gien, that means not you. You know, Gien is you. Gego is don't, don't you. Gego Gien. So I never, I never did that again, but it's, it's still here in, in my mind that even that little teaching, Mm -hmm. 
and I remember when every evening after school where they were trying to be like the boarding school days and they'd come with a big can of yellow powder. <laughs> they'd go down the line, sprinkle everybody's head because they, you know, they must the teachers thought that they all had head lice. Dikumag, that's head lice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we never had till one of the parents got mad. She got tired of washing that big white powder out of her daughter's head. Mm -hmm. But I could say back in them days, they were still trying to be, teach us. Yeah. Simulate us. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it's, it's kind of, to me, it sounds like they're trying to instill some shame, you know what I mean, on everybody that was uh that that they were dealing with you know so i mean they weren't dirty you know what i mean mm -hmm. so <laughs> so as long as they throw that on the kids i'm sure they they were trying to instill some uh some shame on everybody and i don't know i, I suppose psychologically it kind of that would kind of open you up to well uh, what am i am i dirty mm -hmm. you know what i mean uh, do i not know what I should know, and, and it probably goes further from that, you know, so self-doubt. Well, I think back in the, the fish, I think it was the 50s, uh, 50, mm -hmm. when they, they were still trying to, the white teachers were still trying to simulate us, yeah. the ones that were traditional, like I. Mm -hmm. They said, I went talk in Indian, and they said, don't talk like that here. Mm -hmm. You wait till you get home, because she knew my parents were, Mm -hmm. were traditional and that's all they spoke is the language yeah well Perry your question I think a lot of it has to do with our our identity you know our um, our I don't know just who we are as, as native people I think that's one thing that we're always taught you know as uh, as traditional people as just us as Anishinaabe as Anishinaabe as a as a human being you know so I think that's the importance of it is just understanding who who we are you know because uh, that's one of the things about it is everybody's got uh, native blood in them and I think that's that's a representation of uh, definitely who we are you know in family history I think it, it shows that um, you know the more that you understand your past and you understand your origins it, it really uh, contributes to um, self-awareness and self uh, love and uh, you know just a, a general um, uh, what do you call it uh, respect for oneself you know and and our people and and our the way that we were brought up and you know it's unfortunate that I hear these stories and it you know it it hits hard you know like my uncle being ashamed to uh, being being around um, uh, when he was a little boy uh, being taken to, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you want to call it, the non non speaking parts of town, and uh, kind of dreading his uh, his grandmother running into another traditional speaker, and then feeling shame about it. I mean, they they shouldn't they shouldn't have done that, you know. And uh, I think that's the importance is just regaining our identity as as Indian people, and I think just from not not to reiterate a fear um but in our the way it is written i guess in our um treaties is that you know we we shall be um recognized as native people as long as we observe our own customs and traditions and so along with that is the language because you can't separate those things um i guess traditionally and even just, I think, as a human being, you can't take the language away, you can't take the culture away, and you can't take uh, the, the uh, customs and our lifestyles away also, even though they've done a good job, you know what I mean, of doing that. And I think just the, that shaming and, uh, you know, uh, recognizing, and I, could, I guess I could kind of see that. You know, Keith, I don't know if you've ever been exposed to stuff like that, but uh, through the 50s and 40s and our grandmothers, you know, and uh, our, our parents as when they were children, they were 
And uh, we're probably talking what people that are 70 to 80 years old right now. And, uh, you know, they, they, they were brought up like uh, this world is going to, or your way of living is going to end. You know what I mean? So you don't need to to know all that because you're going to be, you know, you're going to be a welder, you're going to be a teacher, you're going to be a, a secretary, and you're going to earn this money, and this is how you're going to make a living now, you know. Be, but before, we didn't need that money. You know, we would just go out and get ourselves a deer, or get ourselves a rabbit, <laughs> you know, or go out and harvest the rice. And so, you know, we, at that time, we had all the riches in the world, you know what I mean? I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't about how much, uh, junior we had you know it wasn't a matter of that or or how well how much we could make to uh um support our ourselves and support families you know but nowadays that that is the system that we do live in uh auntie and and it's i guess it's one of the things that uh you know um is, is part of what it life today but at the same time we have uh we have ancestry and we have status and we have uh you know our families and um that's one of the things why i believe uh auntie karen believes so strongly about the language and about our cultures because you know if we don't um if we don't carry it on uh it's going to be just taken away from us and you're not going to have reservations you're not going to have indian people and all of that and, uh, you know, those, those are the kind of the, the doom uh, outlook. But, you know, the more we have people like you, Perry, and, you know, um, uncles like, like Keith out there, you know, doing it musically, artistically, and uh, as long as we have the guidance of our elders and uh, we get these opportunities like KBFT, you know what I mean, to share this knowledge and to share this uh, struggle you know, to um, maintain our way of life. And uh, it's, you know, usually we, we get a piece of the pie after all the money has been drained out of it, you know. And so I believe that's kind of what happened with radio. It's like, just like you, you hear about the Internet and about um, social media and all this stuff, and that's the, the latest way to make money, you know, as far as uh, greed goes, you know. Um, Oh yeah, go ahead, uh, natives. You can go ahead and have a radio station now. Now that now that we've taken all the money out of it, you know, <laughs> made as much as we can, and you know, so I I do believe that's kind of the the whole uh, process there, and it, it's going to happen to uh, I don't know the internet here pretty soon too. It sounds like it, you know, like uh, a lot of the um, the money making opportunities are are drying up, and so now you're seeing that you know, taking effect now, especially as, uh, you know, right here today, this hour or during this week where a lot of this stuff has kind of uh, lost its value, you know, especially social media. And we see ourselves kind of going back to uh, real life, you know, um, taking care of our families and feeding our families. You know, and, uh, different people believe different ways, like Keith believes different than I do, maybe George, even you, maybe you leave. But what I did, Lester, me and him used to talk all the time when he was, he was uh, here. But uh, he always said, we don't die, we just step into another world. And maybe that's where we're all gonna get our language back when we step into our other world. Well, that was that was one of the things growing up here is, you know, kind of thinking everybody, all of us natives believe the same way. You know, we believe in a great spirit oh, yeah. and we believe in the creator. And but, you know, you look at the way 
I don't know, even different tribes, you know, they have certain aspects of their their way of life that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know, I, I, they pri things are prioritized different, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, some, some tribes, they, they utilize their natural resources, you know what I mean, for profit. And uh, it'd be kind of like us here, uh, cutting down all the trees and maintaining a, a lifestyle where, you know what I mean, the resources, uh, I'm sure we would manage them properly, you know what I mean? Um, but they, there, there's a belief that you can use all of the materials that are available to, to uh, provide for not only just families, but for the community. And I guess that coincides with some are more uh, in step with, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Modern ways? <laughs> You know, corporate America. No, <laughs> Karen. Um, she she brought up uh, the the way we believe, and uh, I believe it like in magic. And Lester gave me had a guitar. It has a nice old guitar that was signed by Chet Atkins, is it? And uh, when I got it home, I opened the guitar and I'm song catching, and the song guitar helped me catch a song. You know, like the song came from, I believe, believing in how Lester believed and you believe and that magic, something that we can't see, but in the old Anishinaabe way. And uh, I'll just play part of the song. I think when he, when he got it, it was, uh, it was this way. It's a song called Reach. Reach for the sky, reach for the sun. And then, then the, um, I was stuck with the word and reach for the dreams on the clouds drifting by. I thought of Lester, you know, like, and just the last name drifting. And I thought, wow, his magic came because I'm playing his guitar. Reach for the sun on the clouds drifting by. And then the hopes and fears and then the, Hopes and dreams and life and good and 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 so songs come to you like um, for tomorrow you might not have the chance to and and so like what you said that you know like our life just changes but songs are magical like that too and I believe in our ways and and I think we get songs and we get stories we get things from the past. We get things from the future, from our dreams, just from breathing and, and living and hearing sounds. And um, it's all part of like, when, and when you hear mention uh, Karen's husband, Lester, he was a good teacher in the community. And he taught in a real subtle way, a loving way. And, and, and so I think now we're just learning some of his lessons, you know, like that. But that song has magic, and so I play that guitar down in Arizona. That car, I talked to my daughter this morning on the phone, and I told her Keith is around, and she said, ask him what song he played for our, my dad. She said, Lester, in that, that, I forgot about that. And, you know, that's funny that you brought it up, because she was saying, ask Keith about that song. I think that's what consciousness is that we all share, you know, and, and as we get older and as we're maybe as young, we know how to tap into that. And, and it's just a natural thing. I'll, I have it recorded though, I'll share it more with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could probably even get it to the Anishinaabe. Like there's words oh, yeah, the clouds, first, stars, yeah. and, you know, the sky and all that. I thought it should be just easy, so I started this song like just... Reach for the sun. Reach for the sky. Reach for 
the hope hope for the good I hope that they see the good in me the good in you for tomorrow you may not have the chance to come to us in dreams and and as artists the most we can do is to write them down and record them that's how we can honor that um, and that's how we can bring more art and creativity to projects like we're talking about today to honor our dreams and the old Anishinaabe is saying um, if you want to give your dreams power wake up you know, and, and yeah. give them power. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, I'm trying to remember again, this is how my mind works, Bawajigan? Bawajigay. Bawajigay, see? Yeah. Okay. What about hope? How would you say you're hoping? Closest would be was uh, in Bagish. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish. Wishing, wishing or I'm hoping. Oh yeah. In Bagish. I still remember that <clears throat> joke you said about when some of those Indian men in the past would have three or four wives. You wrote on Facebook. You said these guys nowadays gay in Bagish. Yeah. They win. They wish. They had two, three wives. There, you know, long, long time ago. Meuja. They had a lot of wives, and that's what I said. I bet the guys are wishing I would be good today. Liju <laughs> Quez, <laughs> two women. Oh, yeah, yeah. Liju, that you could see two again in there. Liju. One is hard enough. Yeah. You, another way you could say one is Abiding. Abiding? Yeah. One time. Oh, okay, yeah. We had to go opposite. I only did that one time. It'd be, it'd be, uh, opposite. And two is Nijing. 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 Three. Well, we're getting close to the end of the hour here, the noon hour. And uh, we're sitting here. Um, we extended the uh, the Anishinaabe Moen um, hour uh, to encompass from 10 to noon. And we got our guest here, Uncle Keith. <laughs> and uh, he's uh, been so awesome here um, joining in the discussion, you know, so we've, we've, uh, we're glad to have him here. Him and Auntie Karen are going to be um, working on some uh, some tracks. We're going to lay down some tracks. How would you say it? Nagamon? Nagamon. Nagamon. Some songs. And uh, we're going to be, uh, Keith is going to be playing producer again on on this. And like I told everybody before at the beginning, he's uh, he's been part of, uh, I think, three other productions. And so... We're gonna continue that on, and we're just so happy that you're here, you know, um, being part of KBFT. And uh, I want to extend uh, that out to other uh, community members. If you want to get involved, um, help us out here in any way that you can. You know, there's uh, volunteer opportunities, and like I said, we we had to scramble around to get our equipment uh, lined up. Normally, you know, when we get this many uh, microphones going and at one time we can usually set people in that other studio back there and behind the window. Um, and it's still available, you know, like, 
there's even places where we could just do performances themselves. I would like to set something like that up. But uh, it takes a lot of uh, technology and takes a lot of, you know what I mean, set up time in that. So if there's anybody that's out there that uh, is kind of handy in that way, yeah. Um, let yourself be known. Come on up here and uh, help us out. Every, everything is appreciated, especially if it uh, our community is involved. It just uh, makes everything that much more uh, special and enjoyable. And uh, let's see, we've got about uh, six minutes. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to cover as far as uh, as far as our language goes? That's uh, that's pretty much it. Introduction uh, just to uh, keep keep it up like uh, okay. Uju, Gagewanu pin Anishina be indigenous cause. Subikune zag igani or subikune zag igan indun jiba. Dick ne do dem. Dingadaswe, <laughs> I said my Indian name. I said I'm my I'm Caribou Clan. I'm 76 years old from Neck Lake. I said uh, I wish more people would learn their language, but and I said uh, yeah, that's all. The evil, that's all. The geek do. I said, Ligi Kido. Uh, you wanna, you wanna say something that maybe uh, it's now Giga go now quick. Almost not noon time. I said Giga go now quick. What a lunch now quick. We see when that means noon lunch in now. Uh, and the punch nigi uh carry o gi kido ke ke say your do uh what do your uh invocation not invocation but do your uh introduction and then say uh say a part of the prayer just just a part okay. just two of the two of the parts okay and next time we'll do the other two so you can be teaching a, a prayer to a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a video. Alright. Now, she been asking this in cars. Makwani do them. Speak on this. I'll be going to do this. But, this is the number of one of these. Uh, I'll get you money to do. I don't know. They can hear you. Oh, they can? You're on. <clears throat> yeah. Louder. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> This is the first part, just two parts of the prayer. So, now get your money do. No go mushan to gis gone to do pogan. Ego go into motion. To go busy now shook. Nah wapen no. Gina go could done ask on away as I'm my way. Gina go in with do mission. To go can away in a mission gay. To go mission gay go. Magasha can wap it down gay go. Magasha can watch a gay gay go. Gishwin Gago, Gamishin, the Dashaway, Gisichigay, Nevisha Gisichigay, Wanishnabe, which Wabanum, Nah, Shawanum Ginago, Kadana Skan, away as I'm my way, Kamina going with Duke Wishin, to go on away in a machine gay, to come mission gago, Magashak and the Wabin down gago, Magashak of a watch a gay gago, Gishwin Gago, Gamishin, the Dashaway, Gisichigay, Nevisha Gisichigay, Wanishnabe, the good Shawanum. Neil, Neil. John, what you said in English. Okay, so I said, uh, you always start your prayers out by addressing the four directions. You've always start with the east. 
So I addressed the east first. Um, I said, look east, uh, you come after the tobacco, I'm getting you to help me. Please watch over me too. Uh, please give me something, maybe something I can dream, maybe something I can see. If you give me something, that's what I'll do. And long time ago, that's what our ancestors, our, the native Anishinaabe did. Um, and thank you for, uh, thank you, East. Which of his All right. That's going to do it for us here. You Which. all make it a good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your day. That's good, you guys. Nice prayer, too. All right. I like them headphones that Karen has. Them. What are they, what kind are those? Those are achy jig. I, you know, I tried to buy some like the bigger ones. You know, like and they're hard to get. Like, mm. um, I, I forget what they are, but because I got big ears, <laughs> after like an hour on there, they get irritating. But these weren't at all. Uh -huh. Those were even better. Yeah, exactly. awesome. Some ideas really came when we were in there too. Like yeah, the and it's recorded too. So yeah. if you need to get a copy, you can just download it. Yeah. I like One thing that. I want to do before Karen leaves is write them a uh, uh, go to sleep part down, Perry, like oh, yeah. big. So uh, I'll, I'll write them. Find a, uh, yeah. And then we can get maybe a cup of coffee now. Yeah. Some, uh, peach. peach cobbler. Yeah. Let's go listen to that peach cobbler. Song. Yeah. A lot of those lyrics typed up with the key. Uh, okay. I made I ideas. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Good. okay. Right. Um, I really like that part when he sings on the way in Japan. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was beautiful. Oh, yeah.